So you guys probably noticed that it's super annoying to have to type your password in over and over again. Uh, the other side of it, passwords also aren't particularly secure, right? When you type in that password, it doesn't get sent in plain text over the network, SSH is smarter than that, but when you log in with a password, it is inherently a little bit weaker than some of these other methods. So SSH has the ability to set up what's called keys, where you essentially make a key on your local machine that you can then use instead of your password. Obviously, when you do this, it's really important to protect the key. If you give a copy of your key to someone, they can log in as you. But as long as you protect the key, if you keep it properly locked down on your local machine, that key is way safer than actually ever using a password. Because that key is essentially a password that's 4,096 characters long, is the way we'll set it up, which is a lot stronger than your 20, if you're lucky, character password, or eight, if you're a normal person, character password. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So, the first thing you have to do if you want to start using keys with these remote systems is you have to generate a key pair on your local machine. Uh, the way SSH keys work is there's two. There's what we call a private key and a public key. Um, if you want to know all the details of this, it's called public key infrastructure. You can look it up on Wikipedia. But the point is, your private key you need to keep secret. If you ever show anyone your private key, you need to delete it. It's no longer safe. You can't use it. They can manipulate you. Um, but you keep your private key secret, and then you give your public key to any machine you want to log into. And essentially, your public and private key have a special relationship such that your public key can be used to verify your private key and vice versa. So when you log into a machine, you use your private key to essentially sign a random piece of data. You send that data to the other machine. The other machine uses your public key to confirm that it can decode the data. And the only way it can do that is if, if it can decode the data and knows that you have the corresponding private key. And if that's true, then it lets you in. So it essentially, it's a clever way of ensuring that you have access to a specific file that it's really hard for someone else to spoof. So to generate a public-private key pair, if you ever use something like GitHub, you've probably done this before. And if you have used GitHub and you already have one of these, you may not want to do it now because by default it will overwrite your old one. You can tell real quick whether or not you've ever done this before. If you do ls.ssh, so there's always a .ssh folder if you've done this before in your home directory. Um, so this is really, I've been using a relative path here, but this is your home directory .ssh on any given machine. Um, if you see this id.rsa and idrsa.pub, that's a public-private key pair. It means you already have one on your machine. Uh, as you can see, I do already have one, although I renamed them with this .orig after it, so I can do this demo right now. If I hadn't had that there, I actually wouldn't have had to type in my password all of those times I was having to type in my password earlier. But I wanted to demonstrate. So I'm going to generate another one. I'm just going to delete it later. But if you do already have an IDRSA and an IDRSA.pub, you can either skip this next step and you'll be able to follow along with the rest of it, or you can rename them something, repeat the do this next step, and then rename them back later. Um, or you can overwrite them. It's not the end of the world, but if you've already set them up with GitHub, you're going to have to do repeat that process. So the command to generate a new set of these is SSH keygen. So SSH keygen, and if we look at SSH keygen, we'll look at the man page for it, it requires a number of arguments. Um, there's different types of keys. Tonight we're going to use RSA keys, which tend to be one of the most common. So we do that by specifying these options here. So the options we're going to use is the bits option tells us how long of a key we want. In general, longer keys are more secure. Uh, we're going to use 4096. That's a pretty standard, fairly secure key length. Uh, dash C is just a comment that uh, makes it easier for you to identify these keys later. It's just for your own purposes. It doesn't actually affect anything. And the final thing we're going to use is uh, the type, which I think is dash T. Cool. So this dash T here will tell us the type of key we want. We're going to use the RSA type. It's probably one of the most common. It's supported by most systems. So if we do SSH keygen, dash T, RSA, dash B, 4096, and then dash C, uh, what you put in dash C is entirely up to you. I recommend you do something that identifies this key as being yours, because system administrators, when they look at your, what this basically does is it just gets appended to the end of your public key, which you give to people. System administrators often have a lot of public keys. They have one for all of their users. 
And if you put something nice here, it makes it really easy for them to find yours quickly if they need to, or if they're looking at a public key and who's it is. So common things to put here are your email address. Uh, the way I always do it is, uh, I mean, is the name of the computer. So I have multiple public keys, so I want to identify which one this is. So I always do mine, the name of the computer, the user followed by the user of the computer. Um, and I actually, some of my computers are dual boot, so I put the operating system but you can put whatever you want here, but it's best if you put something that helps identify you. So an email address, a username, your real name, so on and so forth. Uh, so we're going to do that, and it bonds it. Why does it not like? I think the C needs to be capitalized. Yes. Okay, so it's a capital C. Cool. Now, as it starts to generate this, it's going to ask us a couple of things. It's going to say, what file do you want to save this as? Well, we just want the default. Again, if you already have the default, you'd be overwriting it right now. But we're going to stick with that, so I just hit enter. It's going to ask you for a passphrase. Uh, I highly recommend you use a passphrase if you are in a situation where you want this key to be secure. The passphrase is basically an additional password you enter every time you want to use this key. Um, if you want to use the key in the script or something, sometimes you won't use a passphrase, or there's actually ways to have the best of both worlds. I'll show you. I'm going to use a passphrase, and the way it actually works is when you log into your computer, it'll basically it can save a copy of your passphrase and encrypt it with your login password. So I can use a passphrase so that if you've got a copy of this key, you can't use it, but I can also make it so that just by logging into my computer, it automatically unlocks that passphrase. Uh, which is kind of the best of everything. But if you're on systems that aren't Ubuntu, that don't support that, or that don't have uh, what is called SSH agent, which is something to help you do this, sometimes you'll just create a window passphrase. You want to be a little bit sensitive to doing that, though. So I'm going to create a passphrase. I'm going to make a really weak passphrase. It's going to for a few minutes. And it saved and failed because my passphrase wasn't long enough. So you need more than four characters for your passphrase. Okay, so if it works correctly, your keys will be generated. You're going to get this nice little piece of random art at the end. That's just essentially, it's kind of like a signature of the key, the random key it just generated. Um, if I now look at my .ssh folder, You'll see, in addition to my original ones, which are the ones I renamed, now I have the two default ones. So IDRSA and IDRSA.pub. The .pub is my public key. This is what you share. When you're on GitHub, GitHub is how you can connect to GitHub. This is what you, the contents of this is what you upload to GitHub. Lots of people who have personal websites will stick this on their personal website. So if someone else wants to give me automatic access to their server, they can essentially just install my public key, and then I can log into their server. They never, I never have to use a password on them at all. Um, this is your private key. Never share this with anyone. And if we look at the permissions here, if your permissions are correct, this private key is only readable by me, right? No one else on this computer has any permissions. If you ever accidentally give your private key, if you give everyone else on the computer, or even everyone in your group permission to read your private key, you've exposed it. You need to delete it. Notify anyone that has your corresponding public key that they should delete it as well because it's no longer secure. Generate a new one and replace them. So this requires a little bit of diligence. Keep this safe. I would not like cap this to the screen right now. I mean, I could because I'm not going to delete this if we're done. But this is not something you ever share. You never email this to anyone. If someone emails you asking for it, they're phishing. Give it to them. The .pub one, you can wallpaper across buses going around downtown, right? The point is, you can share this with as many people as you please. This alone is not enough. They need both. All that someone can do with this is give you the ability to access their system. That's not really a security hole, that's the ability for you to access their system and it's the other thing. All right, so now if we want to use this to log in somewhere, what we essentially have to do is we have to copy this .pub to whatever system we want to log into. So there's another command that makes this really easy for you, um, and it's called SSH copy ID. And what you basically do is you give it the name of the machine you want to copy to. So, and you would do it normal pattern, guys, so username, app, so on and so forth, right? So you give it the machine you want to use this key to log into. So this could be, you can do this, you should be able to do this with the Elmer servers. Yeah, I did it with them earlier. So any machine you want to log into, you go ahead and hit enter. And first it's going to ask you for, so this is your SSH password, not the one you just used with the key. This is the password you used with the machine. So this was Elmer, this is your identity password. If you're doing this right, this should be the last time you ever have to type in this password. 
You can type in once, because it's essentially going to go use secure copy behind the scenes. And then from that point forward, you can use the certificate. So, uh, so we're essentially installing our key. OK. So uh, at this point, if you used a password, your operating system may like to pop up a window telling you to enter your password for the key. If you get that pop up, then you need to enter the password for the key. So not the password. There's two different passwords here. The first one is your SSH password on your own system. The second one is whatever password you use for the key. People totally lost. OK. Did this work? Did people do this? Yes. OK. So now, if all went according to plan, you should be able to type in SSH and connect to whatever machine you just copied your key to. Oh, you know what? It's not going to ask for This is where it's going to ask for your key password. You should just do it once. Um, and you'll notice it's not asking me for my SSH password. It's now asking for my key password. And if I check this little box that says automatically unlock this key whenever I'm logged in, this is where I can, I can just type it in once and then any time I log in. So this is the password you just used when you generate the key. If you didn't use a password, you wouldn't get this at all. So if you made a key with no password, this is good. But if you're smart and you use a password, cool. I typed in my password. Now I was able to connect to the web system. But let's do it again. So now if I do it a second time, I've now basically set up my private key to get unlocked. So every time I log into Ubuntu, just with my regular login password, it's going to unlock that key. And now I can connect without ever having to type my password, right? It's using my key. I could then do this. I mean, I have multiple systems I work on. That other key is on a whole bunch of systems. So I could repeat that SSH copy ID command to a whole bunch of systems. You only need to do using Elra. You only need to do it to one of the Elras because the file system is shared between all of them. So if you do it to one of them, this will work on any of them. Um, but if I had other computers, so if you, if you want to do it via the command line, that SSH copy ID command allows you to copy to other computers. If you use something like GitHub, they have a web interface where you like paste the copy. So on like GitHub, what you would do is, and be careful, make sure you get the right one. But uh, if I, not this one, but the public one, .pub. So if I cat that to the screen, if I wanted to use this key to log into GitHub, I would copy this, go to GitHub's website, my user profile as a place to put in SSH keys. I would paste this, I would hit apply, it would upload it, and then I could connect, I could use Git or whatever I could connect via this. Sometimes other systems like Amazon, if you guys already used Amazon EC2, so you may buy things from Amazon, but in fact Amazon is actually a seller of computing time. They're a big cloud provider. So if you want to like use virtual machines on Amazon, you use public keys. You go to Amazon, you basically upload this half to Amazon, then whenever you spin up a virtual machine on Amazon, you can SSH into it, you never need a password. When it creates your virtual machine, it automatically puts a copy of your public key on there because you store one with Amazon and you can SSH directly into it. So this is hugely helpful. You will, I mean, typing in SSH passwords all the time sucks. Because all of those copy commands use SSH behind the scenes, this works for them as well. So if I would, now I can SCP anything I do with Elra, I no longer have to type in my password. SCP, rsync, port forwarding, etc. It's all going to be handled by my key. And if I have my key set up to just automatically unlock when I log in, I will never have to type anything but my login password. Questions on this?